uncertainty we live with in this life. And more often than we would like, we are affected by anxiety and fear when faced by tough decisions, choosing between many paths, or when we're thrown about by forces over which we feel we have no control. Like trying to figure out what you want to study in school, where you want to go to college, if anywhere. If you'll be able to afford it, can you work and still get good grades? What kind of debt are you willing to live with for the next 10 or 20 or 30 years? Trying to figure out who you are, what you want to do with your life, what kind of career you want. Will you be happy? What makes you happy? Will you be able to pay the bills, pay off your debt, support your family? If you've lost a job or have been searching for a new one for weeks, months, and years, the uncertainty may have morphed into a thick fog of despair where doors of opportunity, when you find them, are shut firmly against you. It's possible that the violence of this world has intruded on the space you once knew as home and felt was safe. Some of us may struggle with addiction to alcohol, drugs, sex, power, money, the thrill of risk, and we feel powerless against their pull, driven by a compulsion to do what, to do what we don't understand, but that we know we don't want to do. Perhaps there is clinical depression not alleviated by, medical, by medications, untouched by therapy, a hopelessness and helplessness that no one around us seems to understand. For many, the longing for intimacy may seem an unrealized or already shattered dream. Relationships may not have begun or developed as we hoped, or maybe they have already ended in separation or divorce or death. Perhaps you or someone you love has been burdened by a life-altering health condition, chronic disease, costly and unpleasant medical regimens. Perhaps this disease has been progressing for years and you are still trying to come to terms with what its effects mean for you, and there is the fear of death. Maybe you are reflecting back across your life, looking at the gaps between your dreams and your reality, regrets, guilt, and disappointment. And even so, I wouldn't exchange my doubt for certainty at any price. Even doubting, even an uncertainty, I see within myself more arrogance and judgment of others than I care to admit. I cannot Im imagine the monster that certainty might turn me into. Doubt has become the living pulp of my faith, the edge that cuts through apathy to the quick and jerks me back to life. And my experience with doubt reminds me of the description of God's word. Scripture, as presented in Hebrew, as, as presented in Hebrews, being sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the, to the division of joint and marrow, soul and spirit. Without having seen or touched or heard the incarnate Christ, we have the word. And for me, almost as certain, I have my experiences within the word. So I want you to go back um, to the descriptions of the sea and the storm. I love the images of, of the boats and, and, and water in the Bible, especially the New Testament. Um, I want you to go back and imagine being in a boat in the middle of a lake. Lake St. Clair is a perfect example because it gets pretty crazy out there. And you're rowing along and waves are throwing your boat around. You have no control. You're terrified that at any moment the boat will flip over. You'll be lost. Uh, you know, you might be able to swim, but it's not going to be for long. And, uh, and death seems pretty immediate. So I read a passage like this, and even when I might not be able to say with certainty that, you know, knowing what I believe or, or uh, what I don't believe, I can, I can read a passage like this and I can meditate on it. And I can imagine that storm and the waves and the wind, but then something draws me down below, below the surface of the waves, where there is deep water and it's calm and quiet. And whatever is happening on, on the surface, I know that there's that peace beneath that I can descend into. And for me, that is the image of meditation on Scripture. Not that it's going to solve all my problems, 
Not that necessarily my, answer, my prayers will be answered, but that I know that for a moment I can find rest. The peace that I found has been in these stories of the Bible, in the language itself, in the safe spaces created between the words, contemplative prayer, meditation on scripture, and the power of the word has provided the the peace of the deep, whatever storms have raged above. I can drop down below and experience that rest. And it brings to light the whole new meaning of the, the first passage of John where Jesus is described as logos, the word who was with us before time began and will be with us um, forever. That he is present in the word in a way that we can access even when we don't believe that that word is living. What I want to say really is that I think it's okay not to know It's okay to have questions about who Jesus was and is and to be confused and to be a little bit afraid of some of the things that he did and that he calls us to do. That it's still possible to have a relationship with him even if we don't understand who he is. That the relationship we can have with him, our faith, can be found in the word, both lowercase and capitalized. In contemplative prayer and in actions, service of others, that our experience of these things is just as important as having clear answers to our questions about history, and that we can follow Jesus even when we are not sure who he is, who we need him to be, or even if God exists. Just as a final thought, I think part of the disciples' struggle was that even as they came to see Jesus as Messiah, he was not the Messiah or king they thought they needed. And this experience rings true for me as well. The disciples imagined in the imagery of the Old Testament and the the Hebrew scriptures a king that would come back and and overthrow the uh, Roman occupiers and, um, and free the Jews, a man who would be their king. Jesus is often not who we think we need. In the midst of the craziness of our lives, these questions can bring an added level of chaos, uncertainty, and even more anxiety. And in those times, we can go and meditate on the word. In Jesus' name, amen.